All right, so now we got that good. Make sure actually we're good. We're on lights, camera, action. So what we want to do here, ladies and gentlemen, is we have our zeros 1 plus square root of 3 and 1 minus square root of 3. Just like you had for your homework quiz, the main important thing you guys need to understand is remember, these are your zeros, right? Your x-intercepts. We talked about these. The zeros, the solutions. So when we write that, when we're finding the solutions, we said x equals your zeros, right? Remember those notes we took last class where we talked about the zeros are equal to the x-intercepts. They're equal to your roots. So x equals 1 plus square root of 3, and x equals 1 minus square root of 3. So then what we did from before we got to here, we set them all equal to 0. To solve, to solve x equals this, we had them set equal to 0, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set all these equal to 0. So I'm going to say x minus 1 plus square root of 3 equals 0 and x minus 1 minus square root of 3 equals 0. Does everybody follow me so far? If not, you can raise your hand. Totally cool. OK. The next thing, how we got to this point, remember, when we set, why did we set them equal to 0? Because of the zero product property. The zero product property said we had two factors that multiplied to equal 0. So what I had is I had this times this equals 0. So that's exactly what I'm going to write. Okay, right? Remember we had zero product property, you set them both equal to zero, and then you solve for x and you get your solutions, you get your zeros. So now I'm just working my way backwards. So now I have two factors and I need to find figure out the polynomial. So I'm not setting them equal to zero anymore. Now what I want to do is I'm gonna call it f of x. When I multiply these out, I want to see what f of x is, and that's what we're trying to get, the polynomial. So here's where it gets a little confusing. This looks pretty confusing. It's not as easy as your typical foil, right? First, outer, inner, last. This is like your last term is a binomial. So this can get pretty confusing. If you're going to try to do the first, right, then the outer, inner, last, try to do foil with this, you could get a little confused. However, if you're very, um, if you're very detailed, you can get through it. It's not bad. But I'll show you a little trick. One thing we can do is use the associative property. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite my parentheses to include, instead of the last two terms as a binomial, I'm going to write the first two terms as a binomial. And the reason why I wanted to do that is because when the first two terms, when I write them as a binomial, are exactly the same. And now the last two terms, that's supposed to be a minus. The last two terms are exactly the same, and, but I have a difference of signs. Does anybody remember when you have the first two terms the same, the last two terms the same, and a difference of signs, what we call that? Anybody? Squares. Difference of squares, right? Because these two are going to multiply to give me a square number. x plus 1, so x minus 1 times x minus 1 squared, and then square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is a negative 3. I could multiply the middle terms, ladies and gentlemen, and you have to. If you want to follow the rules of? foil, do it. But what you'll notice is the middle terms cancel out. All right, So I'm just applying the rules of difference of two squares. Now, x minus 1 squared is going to provide me with a perfect square trinomial. That equals f of x. So here I get x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 3 equals f of x. I'll write the f of x first. f of x is my function equals x squared minus 2x minus 2. So therefore, when I have a function, x squared minus 2x minus 2, it will include the zeros, 1 plus square root of 3 and 1 minus square root of 3. OK? Yes? Why didn't you distribute the negative 3? Why didn't I distribute the negative 3? You mean here? Yeah. Well, because it's, remember, it's minus 3. So it's not being multiplied by negative 3. It's minus 3. That's why I didn't distribute it. Does that make sense? Remember, it's, yeah, it's. It's like, um, well, remember, I had something like this, x plus 4 times x minus 4. So when you multiply this out, you get x squared minus 16. You don't distribute like the negative 16. It's x squared minus 16. The only difference was, I'm getting tangled around. The only difference is now I have, it's just a binomial that's being multiplied. Instead of x squared, it's x minus 1 squared minus 3. Does that kind of see it? I know it's a little bit, this is, looks a lot more different than that, but it's the same kind of process. Cool, yes? So, um, since the what are they called, radicals, like, since they're opposite, they equal negative 3? 
since they're, yeah, um, yes, okay, that's a positive and that's a negative. So it's always a negative. Yeah, positive times a negative will give you a negative, okay. right? And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 gives you 3. Which other one more numbers? Uh, 60. 61. 61. Uh, 61. Uh, 61. Uh, I'll see what I can do. But anybody, questions on this? Mm -hmm. 